Hello everyone, welcome back to Data Bracket. In this demo, we are going to see how to perform a simple ETL task using Python Pandas. So we will read data from uh, Google API and we will write the data into Postgres. We will perform some transformations in between and we will see how Pandas help to uh, perform this transformation and what function does what in which scenario. Let's see how our data is going to look. So this is the data that we are going to extract from Google Cloud. So this is a startup's demo data, which is nothing but a file filled with dictionaries. So this dictionary contains six elements like name, images, the alt text for this startup and the description about the startup, the link to the startup and the city where the startup is. So let's try extracting this data. Let's follow standard data engineering principles and let's try performing this ETL from end to end. All right, uh, here we are in our uh, editor. So let's try uh, first thing we need to do is to read the data from the API. So I'm going to import pandas first because this is the library in picture with which we are going to use extensively and I'm going to import python request to get the data from the uh, API. So what we'll do is first thing let's read the data from this API so our, this let's call this as raw data variable and let's get the api data by calling the get method on top of that api endpoint so this is our uh, api endpoint and uh, let's try printing out the data so the request.get will give us a response object so this response object will have many uh, wrapper functions on top of it so if we do print raw data dot text we should see the text coming in from this uh, endpoint from the get call so i'm gonna call python pandas data pipeline so this should run the code and this should call this endpoint and it should return the text coming in from this response so yeah we can see the text is coming back and it's in dictionary so as standard data engineering uh, principle let's try saving the data raw data as it is like the first rule of data engineering is you should not tinker with the incoming data you should always save it in some place then you should use that data to transform and write it to somewhere else so let's try writing this so i'm going to create a new folder inside here let's call it raw files and uh, let's use python's open method so with open we'll open raw files and we'll call this raw data.json and we will write the content that we are getting from the read text method and we will assign this to a variable f and using this f we will write our raw data.txt into this file so if we are to run this file we should see a file called raw data.json inside this folder right now we don't have any but it will get get created so yeah we have the data and we can see that it is a file filled with dictionaries with six of the keys with the information related to the startup so we have this so let's try creating a pandas data frame out of this file so let's call a raw data frame let's name this raw data frame and let's call pd dot read json because this is a json file and let's give the path to our json file which is nothing but raw files slash raw data dot json and let's leave lines equal to true because we have every line as a dictionary so if we are to print raw df we should see let's take a sample of 10 rows only we should see 10 rows of the data frame so this shouldn't take long yeah we can see the 10 rows of data frame the name is one row images link and city and uh, yeah we have our data converted into a pandas data frame now let's apply some transformation the use case for this demo is we have the links right few of the links have http methods and few of them have https methods right 
so if we are to uh, let me print all without sample so that we will understand that so this data frame if we can see some uh, links will have http and some links will have https okay we are getting six columns but since the screen is uh, expanded we are not able to see all the columns let's slice the column we'll let's take only the link from the data frame and if we run this again we will see only the link column we will not see any other column and since we have already written this right let's uh, disable or comment this out so that we will not keep calling nine point again and again and keep writing the same data to the same file so we have the uh, file here the raw file and we can see we have https method http method we have both in this column right so the use case is we have to get only the secure endpoints for the startups which is https and we are going to filter out only the startups that are based in new york city so that is simple use case and we will take that data frame which have only secure endpoints and the startups which are in new york city and we will write it to postgres so let's get into the transformation part now so let's call this secure startups df and we have a raw df right we are going to take that and we are going to call lo locate method which will help us uh, filter the columns like we can select a specific column from the data frame or certain number of rows in an indexed way and we can apply transformation to that column in specific and filter out the data that we need so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to run apply this loc method on raw data frame and again i'm calling raw data frame and i'm taking the link column let's convert this to string so that we can apply the string contains method and we are seeing if the string is containing https or not so we will get a data frame which will have link column which only have https uh, strings so if we are to print this now we should see the columns with only https methods see https only https we are getting and uh, let's see the length of raw data frame right so let's print raw data frame dot count and dot count let's see the count of both the data frames it should be less because we are filtering out all the data frames yeah we can see this have 40000 records but our filtered data frame have only 3000 records so our filter is working and we are getting only the http s endpoints so the next part is uh, let's do one thing so if we try to visualize this right we are getting irregular indexes so we can see 40 uh, 40447 411 471 we don't want this right let's simply call reset index method so what this method does is it will reset the index and it will give us in a sequential order so if i am to run this again we can see the indexes are resetted and we can see that column got created with the new indexes but the old column is as it is which has been named as index so what we can do is we can simply call drop method on top of this and we can drop the index column but this is again extra step we have to do so instead of this we have a inbuilt uh, parameter that is available for this reset index which is nothing but drop if we call this as if we pass it as true it will drop this index column and it will leave us with the newly generated sequential index so we can see this is a newly generated sequential index and the old index is gone now right so that's one good thing 0 1 2 are the indexes these letters are nothing but the uh, last letters of the city which got uh, added into a new line so we can ignore this so let's apply simple transformation let's sort this uh, data frame by name sort values it doesn't have just sort it have something called sort values or we can in index uh, sort by index also 
so we are going to use the column name to sort it and the names will be sorted in ascending order the default is ascending so if i am to run this now we should see all the uh, rows which are sorted by the name column right these are non-numeric so it went down so this is one good thing but again the index has been uh, uh, what do you call messed up so let's call the reset index after the sort is done so that we will have a proper index yeah we have the proper index and we have the sorted names and we have all the six columns so now we have one more condition or one more requirement for this use case right we want to get new york call only new york data which have secure endpoints so if i am to see only new york data let's say if i am to call city which have let's see how many unique columns are how many unique values are there in this city column of the data frame so let's get the count so unique will give the count uh, city and unique I have to call this so if I am to run this now we have 30 unique values in that city column so if you remove this n and just leave unique we should see all the unique values in that city column so these are all the unique values in that city column so we are interested in new york so let's add one more condition here inside the loc only so we are going to add and we want to locate all the uh, links which have https and raw df of city is equal to new york right we want both to work so we are going to pass both condition with an and operator so if i am to run this again now we will see that we will not get any responses this is expected because we are passing this entire thing as one expression python or pandas will not work like that we have to make sure these are separated expressions so that python can identify and python can apply that logic and it can give us separate values so if i am to run now we should see only new york in the unique rows right this is working now we have a data frame which have only new york data and have secure endpoints which is https so we don't need this print statement anymore now i'm gonna remove this now the next part is to connect to postgres and write the data so again if you are following my uh, demos you know that i don't uh, directly use secrets in my uh, code so i'm going to import config parser and i'm i have secrets for my postgres saved in the secrets.ini file i'm going to simply read that file using config parser this is the default code for the config parser i use in all my demos if you guys want to see how this works please check out my previous video which i created on DuckDB. and we are going to use a library python library which is PSYCOPG2. this is a library that helps us connect to postgres right using this library we can connect to postgres by simply calling connect method on top of it and passing our postgres credentials so we are reading this username password port database everything from our secrets.ina file and we are passing it to this library's connect method this will give us the connectivity string and we can get a cursor out of it like in uh, programming languages you will get a connectivity cursor which you can use to execute statements right we can call this cursor and we can call postgres connectivity dot cursor oh, this is not pi this is pg connectivity dot cursor so this method on top of this connect uh, connectivity string cursor will help us execute sql statements in postgres so if we are to execute any statement right we can simply call cursor dot execute 
select all from table name like this we can simply run sql queries that query will be executed on postgres library will return us the response so let's create one table for now let's call cursor dot execute and let's call this table as a uh, secure startups so this is going to be the table definition i'm going to copy and paste it here and let's have word wrap so that we can see it properly so we are going to create a table if it doesn't exist we'll call it secure startups we have an id column which is a big serial and we'll keep it as primary key we have our name which is coming from our json dictionary name images alt text description link and city everything that we are getting from that json we are adding it as a column here so what we can do is now we can uh, simply run cursor dot uh, sorry pg connection dot commit this will commit our changes into the pg sql we can close the cursor connection and we can close connectivity also pg connectivity this is a secure thing you have to follow always if you're working in clusters or uh, distributed remote environments because uh, if you leave the connection open there are chances that it might get uh, hacked or the chances of uh, security vulnerabilities are high so let's try querying this table and see if it exists so let's try select all from secure startups if i am to run this i should not see a table because it doesn't exist yet but uh, after running this we should be able to see that table let's run this and we are able to the run was successful if i am to run this again i can see the table got created through that python library this is good so uh, we are left with next thing which is nothing but to insert the data that we have in our data frame into this table so to insert that data pandas data frame have this uh, method called iterate tuples so for every row in the pandas data frame we will get the row values and we can use that to insert it into our uh, postgresql table so i'm going to copy this code again just to save time so this is the code actually so for every row in our secure data frame of iterate tuples this will return a tuple and we are going to insert into our secure startups for name images and all six column names we are passing the values so for every value we are using this row dot the tuple name which is nothing but name images or alt text which is this row is the tuple that we are getting from this iterate tuple method and i'm simply replacing this single quotation with double uh, two single quotations just to make sure that the sql query will not crash because of the special characters so this i'm replacing only for the string columns and uh, this should be good if you are to run this now it should insert all of uh, 500 or change records that we got after filtering into our postgres table so let's run this again and we should see the data in the table now and we have the data in the table this is awesome and we have it in uh, sequential order with correct index and the names are also sorted and we have only the secure endpoints for the city new york this is the expected requirement and we were able to successfully fulfill it amazing uh, i think this was useful and you got to learn something new today guys thank you for sticking till the end have a good day